Endurance USA. We'll take a look at endurance racing as teams from Honda, Yamaha, and Kawasaki challenge the dominance of Team Suzuki. In the AirTech Formula 2 class, exotic Grand Prix 250cc motorcycles go head-to-head -head with the championship at stake. Prime Network, taking a leap in bringing to television the most complete worldwide motorcycle racing coverage. From Malaysia to Spain on the World Grand Prix Tour, and from Willow Springs in California to Road Atlanta in Georgia, the Wira Road Racing Series. Don't miss a thrilling minute as Prime Network brings you motorcycle racing like nobody else. Today on Motorcycle Madness. Brazelton, Georgia, the home of Road Atlanta, and today, exciting championship road racing action. It's the 1992 Metzler Wira Grand National Final. Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Myers. Welcome to the series finale of the Western Eastern Road Racers Association Championship season. Now, with me to help bring you all of the exciting action is Prime Network's expert road race analyst, Richard Chambers. Richard, if you're a road race fan, it gets no better than this. That's right, Larry. A big field of competitors and several championships still up for grabs. But my favorite, and I'm sure the rest of the fans here at Road Atlanta, is Formula USA, the most powerful and exotic motorcycles raced here in the U.S. on the racetrack. Indeed they are. The action is going to be great. And speaking of Formula USA, the first of two races to be held in that class on the starting grid, just about set to go. Before the flag drops, though, let's take a look at the key players, and we'll show you how they got here. Heading into the season finale here at Road Atlanta, Lee Schertz is the top privateer and stands fourth in the standings. The San Diego-based rider aboard his powerful 1,340cc Suzuki finished second at the season opener at Willow Springs and at the midway point of the championship chase was tied for the series lead. At Indianapolis and Pocono, things did not go Schertz's way and with 10th and 8th place finishes coupled with a lack of funds that kept him out of the Moroso round, Schertz dropped to fourth in the standings. Through the first four races of the series, Chuck Graves and his Valvoline Suzuki was on top of the championship leaderboard. The Granada Hills, California rider captured both legs of the opener at Willow Springs, finished fourth at the spring event here at Road Atlanta, and earned top American honors at the Canadian round. Despite the early season success and a second outright win at Pocono, heading into the final round in Atlanta, Graves was out of title chase. He's in third place in the standings. We were going in the fourth round, and I had a I had a 17-point lead on everybody, and, and uh, I was leading that race on the second leg. And on the fourth lap, the bike blew a clutch clutch basket, and I DNF the race. Get, you know, which I accumulated no points. Uh, so I worked real hard to, to get back into into a winning position, and leaving the the sixth round from Pocono, heading into the seventh round, I was one point out of the lead from Donald Jackson, 14 points ahead of Michael Martin. And I fell off and broke my collarbone in practice and threw it, you know, at Donald once that, you know, he was 21 points ahead and there's no way I can win. In second place is Michael Martin from Carrollton, Texas. In both Formula USA legs of the season opener, Martin was in position to win, but was forced to the rear of the pack with fuel problems. He finished 10th. Round two here at Road Atlanta. Martin won the first leg and finished second to Donald Jacks by two tenths of a second in leg number two. There were problems for Martin in Canada that resulted in the 14th place finish. From that point, though, it's been all seconds and thirds. Martin is 17 points behind series leader Donald Jacks. He needs the win here at Road Atlanta today. Only way I can pull this thing off is if I win and he doesn't score any points. And uh, he's a he's a good friend and a, and a teammate and all. And so it's a uh, you sure don't want to wish any bad luck on anybody, you know. And uh, but but if I could pull this thing off and win this race and uh, he has some motor problems or something like that, you know, it make me a happy guy. Already a happy guy is series points leader Donald Jacks. At Willow Springs, Jacks did not fare well, finished eighth. There were more problems in Canada that left him in 21st place. But at all other races, Jacks was in victory lane. Outright wins in Seattle, Moroso, and here in Atlanta. Went in here in the spring that, uh, that had a lot. Um, boosted my confidence quite a bit going into the other rounds. And uh, we, we just kept doing the same thing after we won here. We just pushed and pushed and found ourselves on the winner's podium almost every race. So. In addition to the series leaders, two other riders have scored overall wins. Canadian Steve Crevier, who is the reigning Canadian Superbike champion, rode to victory in Canada aboard a 750 Kawasaki. That was a popular win, to say the least. 
Fritz Kling, he's from East Lansing, Michigan. He took the checkers at Indianapolis aboard a Gold Hill racing Yamaha. All that talent and a whole lot more is coming up in the 1992 metzler Weira Grand National Final. It's brought to you by Metzler Tire, putting the power where it belongs. Metzler, feel the difference. And we'll be right back. Earned a you just joined us. We're at Old Atlanta in Brazelton, Georgia for the 1992 Metzler Weir at Grand National Final. Now, we've mounted some cameras on one of the riders that you'll see out here a little bit later today in race action. And uh, Rich, he's taking us around this racetrack, and it's almost like a roller coaster. It is almost like a roller coaster. Turn one, a very hard right hand corner up across the top of the hill. Dramatic elevation change as the riders work their way down through the S's into turn four. They approach turn five, hard braking. They go left and over across the top of the hill. As the racer is dropped down to turn number six. Turn six and seven form a hairpin. Hard breaking into turn six. Square the corner off turn seven and get that run down the back straightaway. Again, the speeds get up to around 165 miles an hour as these Formula USA machines take to the top end portion of the course. The straights, the corners, the elevation changes. Old Atlanta has it all. Now, Chuck Graves told us earlier about one of the trick parts of this track. As you crest the edge of the gravity cavity, you gotta tell your mind, okay, I'm not gonna let off the gas. And if you keep the thing pinned, you lose your stomach, stay in it, then you start looking up and there's a, a wall. So you, you gotta trick your mind into saying, okay, I won't shut off until the second paint line, and then I'll get off of it, and, I'm, and then you're on the brakes heading for a wall with the rear tire off the ground. So it's a, it's a real rush. Well, we're very close to the start of this race, and Chuck Graves, who we just heard from, is going to be in a rush to get to the finish line when it does get underway. And there is Chuck Graves. He's going to start on the outside of the front row. Next to him is Fritz Kling. Then uh, Crevier, the Canadian champion, is on the inside pole. Rich, a strong field. Strong field indeed. Points leader coming into this round, Donald Jacks, back in row four, trying to wrap it up here at Road Atlanta. Well, Jax uh, is taking it easy this weekend. All he has to do is finish in those two legs, get some points, and he will have the championship wrapped up. I, I really find it difficult to believe that Jax is going to let it all hang out. Now, this one about set to get underway. The fog has moved in here at Rolana. A slight mist in the air. What do you think about the tire selection? Uh, are they still with slicks, Rich? Yes, they're all with slicks, Larry. It's a bit wetter than it is right now before slicks would come into play. From the outside of row one, Graves grabs the early lead into turn one. And right behind him, rider D6, Michael Martin. We had a quick hit to Fritz Kling. Uh, those leading the back on this opening lap of the first leg of Formula USA racing. And look at that field already starting to set up. Uh, I'll tell you, it's a rainbow of color. As the bikes make their way into turn five here on lap, a lot of jostling for position going on back in the field. Leader Graves out in front by about six or eight bike lengths, but some pressure coming back there for those positions outside the top five. Well, as I mentioned, this is the first of two legs. Now, they will complete this leg. They'll take the position that they get. It's added to uh, whatever they do in the second leg. And whoever has the lowest number, like a third and a, a second, would come up to five. And maybe if someone had a pair of... Uh, First place is, of course, that would be two. The guy that has the lowest number wins overall for the day, and he's the guy that gets maximum points. Right now, the man in line for the maximum points is Chuck Graves, rider number 24. What is his strategy at this point in the race, Rich? He's trying to get a little bit of a cushion behind him. He knows there's a lot of hard-charging riders trying to close in on him. He's just trying to get a little bit of breathing room, but I don't think Kling's going to let it. So it's uh, Kling running in the number two position. There was Crevier aboard that bright green Kawasaki. He sticks out. Crevier gets into a little bit of a wobble there. Crevier always rides very hard right on the very edge, and he's really pushing that 750 Kawasaki hard as he tries to close in on Michael Martin. Michael Martin, of course, is the rider that needs the win out here today. He needs the win. Needs some problems out of uh, Jax, and if, if that should happen, then Martin could win the championship. Uh, right now, Jax running back a ways off the leader's pace. He's served his motorcycle, I would have to think. Wants to make sure of a uh, couple of strong finishes. Somebody that's not trying to serve a motorcycle at all is David Sadowski. Sadowski came from row four, and he has worked his way up into the top five. He's given Crevier a big, big bunch of trouble as they close in on Martin. And Martin running in number three position is Crevier right behind him. Then comes Sadowski, uh, Dave Sadowski. Sadowski's not had the best of seasons he would love at this final race of the year to put it all together. Look at the fog coming in. Does that obstruct the rider's vision on the track? 
really on the track, but later on when the riders start exerting themselves like Tadowski is right now, the visors will start to fog up just a little bit. Kling, late breaking under the bridge, grabs the lead from Chuck Graves. Back behind him, Michael Martin now comes under fire from David Sadowski. Crevier still in fifth place. Crevier, though, is charging, and so is Fritz playing up front. Chuck Graves, rider number 24, is pulling off the track. Graves has pulled to the side of the racetrack. Some kind of a problem with his Valvoline Suzuki, and it looks like Graves could be out for the day. Meanwhile, Fritz Kling is out front. Sadowski has moved now to the number two position, and here comes Grevier. He creeps up into the number three slot, and there is Graves, side of the track. Some of the corner workers uh, looking the machine over. Uh, he's obviously, whatever that problem might be, he's out of the hunt on this one. Whether or not he gets it fired up, goes back into the race. I think we're saying goodbye to Graves as far as this first leg is, is uh, concerned. Chuck Graves out of it here in leg number one. Hopefully he can repair it for leg number two. Playing, continuing to lead Sadowski in second place as the leaders make their way down the back straightaway. And Chuck Graves has worked his way into the pits. Chuck, will you make it back for the second leg? Yeah, I'm gonna, if the bike's fixable, I'll go out and I'll give it all I got. Disappointed? Yeah, very. What can I say? That's racing. Racing on the track is Fritz Kling. He's out front. Sadowski in second. There's Crevier, Michael Martin running in fourth. And Donald Jacks has 